Today we have a piece of weeping birch. This comes to us from my friend Dave at Calmwood Creations. As I look in here, I can see some chatoyants before it's even turned or sanded or anything. Right now it's nine by 10 by uh, three and a half. I'm going to cut off this corner somewhat and the same with this corner because I'm, as I round it up, I'm just gonna beat myself to death trying to do it with a chisel. So I'm just gonna take it to the bandsaw and cut those two corners slightly rounded and that'll give us a better starting point. Then I'll find a place in the center there for my woodworm screw, drill a hole, get it mounted up on the lathe and we'll get to turning. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, or as we like to say here at Shady Acres Woodshop, howdy, let's get to it. Okay, I've knocked the corners off a little bit on this piece. I've drilled a flat spot for my chuck jaws to set against and a hole for my woodworm screw and we'll just get this mounted up and get cracking. And maybe for the past few turnings I've given the OCD crowd and I count myself amongst them cause for concern with all the square corners and whatnot. <laughs> That's not my OCD. Mine has to do with three-way switches, oh my gosh and making sure I've turned stuff off. So I'm gonna round it up, not necessarily for the OCD people, but just because I kinda want to on this one. So this'll be a round bowl. It's not gonna be a regular bowl by any means. There's all kinds of irregularities in the top here. And of course, we're gonna leave the bark on. So I'll start by rounding it up. And of course, we'll use tailstock support. And I like to spin the piece up a little bit, let the live center find its own hole. It's a little thing, but it means a lot. Little things mean a lot. Let's we'll see what kind of speed we can get here. About 550 RPM. We're going to be using a 5 8 inch bowl gouge, mask and face shield on of course. Well, this is all round. That's all round. Oh, well, it's all round. That didn't take long. Well, I got one little flat spot here. It's right where it says weeping birch. But we'll take care of that right now. I'm going to flatten off the bottom and then start working on this corner. This is kind of fun. I haven't done a round bowl in a while. I might be able to pick up the speed now, too. About 650. Well, now I'm going to come all the way down here, flatten off the bottom and lay out for a tenon, I think. See some of that beautiful green in there? Mark out for the tenon. And we'll go ahead and make the tenon. And we'll use this diamond point tool to square up the sides of the tenon. But I need to raise my tool rest a little bit here first because the tool is so thin. That's good. Now I'll move back over here to the side and finish up our profile.
Yeah, okay. We'll go with that. Time for sanding. I'm going to start the sanding at 80 grit with my 2 inch disc. Uh, I've spent a lot of time, a good half hour, cleaning out bug holes. I didn't realize there were so many of them. And now they're clean, so it should be good to go. I'm going to have the lathe spinning in reverse to begin with at uh, 350 RPM. I'll alternate between forward and reverse. And I'll show you what that looks like as soon as I get my mask on. I hate when that happens that it was totally my fault. You have to hold your disc at the right angle and now I've torn it loose from the Velcro. I can fix it and I will, but I'm going to grab another one. Anyway, that's what I'm going to be doing for now. i got an hour and a half before dark and that's about what it's going to take to get the, get the sand and get the sanding sealer on there. So I'll bring you back when it's time for that. See you in a bit. Got to hurry now. That took a while. I need to be able to see my way back into the house. This is a shellac based sanding sealer I'm applying. It's called Zinzer Seal Coat. And then I will apply Zinzer Shellac over this. Although you don't have to, but that's what I like to use. You can apply any clear finish over it. And I'll put on two coats of this and then two coats of shellac. And I have a very short video showing what I do in between coats. I, I quit showing it because it's it's so repetitive and it's smoothing between finish coats or something like smoothing anyway. Smoothing, smoothing between finish coats I think is what it's called. And it's less than three minutes long. So look that up on my channel if you want to know what I do in between coats. Now I'm going to need a brush to get into some of these bug holes. They don't look too bad once once you get some finish in there or sanding sealer or something. So there you go. See you tomorrow. I have the piece turned around with the tenon mounted up in the chuck. We're going to be turning at 670 RPM. 5 8 inch bowl gouge, mask and face shield on. Dusty, huh? Dusty. What's up with that? Oh, I see. Look at all the bug holes. Bug activity, that's what it is. Well, that's the way it goes. Well, they are becoming fewer. That's a good thing, the bug holes. That might be about the right thickness for the edge. I want to leave some of this bark on there. I'm going to go sharpen up. Got about an inch in bottom thickness. And I 
think that'll probably do it. Yeah. Quarter inch. I'm gonna put a fresh burr on my scraper and we'll scrape. Good to go. Time for sanding. I spent a little time digging out bug holes and luckily, can you can you remember how many there were when I said there was so much dust that was covered in bug holes and now we have like four or five of them is all. And they're all cleaned out now so that took me about a half hour or so. Now I'm going to start the sanding with my Sandoflex. This is 180 grit and that's as fine as I will go. I'm going to sand all of this edge and I'm going to sand it from the inside out. I don't want to. I don't want to come in here and ruin my beautiful finish that I have on the outside of this. I should have done this earlier. I just plain forgot. Boy, I must be getting old. When I'm done with that, I'll switch to my two-inch disc starting at 80 grit. I'll have the lathe spinning forward at uh, about 400 RPM, and I'll show you what all that looks like as soon as I get my mask on. I'll do a little bit more of that, but that's what it looks like. And then starting at 80, working up through 400. And that looks pretty easy peasy. I'll bring you back here in a bit and we'll put some sanding sealer on there. See you in a bit. Well, let's see what this looks like. Again, this is a shellac based sanding sealer I'm applying, just like on the outside. And then I'll put shellac over this. I can't tell you how smooth this is, it's just incredibly smooth. I just love the way the bark sets off the rest of the piece. Dark bark does the best at that, but this is a combination of light and dark and it still looks good. So I'll put on two coats of this, two coats of shellac, and I'll bring you back in just a little bit and we will take off the tenon. I'll see you in a little bit. Alrighty then. I've mounted a block of wood up in my chuck. I'm going to put a non-slip cloth over that and bring up the bowl. And bring up my tailstock. I still have that center hole there for reference so I can just drive my live center right into that. Bring up my tool rest. We'll spin the piece up, see if it's running true, and it is. Apply a little more pressure, turn the speed up to about 500 RPM. I'm going to grab a 3 8 inch bowl gouge and commence to removing that tenon. Check for clearance. We have good clearance. Everything's looking good. I'll just keep making it a little bit smaller. Now it's pretty small, so I want to switch to a swept back bowl, guys, so that I can get in there closer. I'm going to turn the speed down to about 400 RPM. Just to keep it manageable. Well, that's pretty manageable. Now well, that's a little too close for comfort. Usually I can remove all of it, but that's about all I can remove this way. <laughs> Thank you. 
I'm just going to take that over to the workbench, sand that up, sign it, get it finished, and I'll be right back. Be sure you stick around at the end of the video so you can see the before and after shots of this piece. If you'd share the video, I'd really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Well, here it is. One Weeping Birch Live Edge Bowl in the books. And it's a beauty. It's a good example of a, a half log bowl. There's the bottom all finished up. It's got a few bug holes, but I've cleaned them out. There's no additional bug activity. I can't believe how many there were before I finished turning the inside. That was an amazing amount. What do you think? The wall's too thick? Just right? Too thin? What's your opinion? I'm always interested in that. Be sure you let me know down there in the comments. Thank you Dave from Calmwood Creations for sending this along for all to enjoy. If you like this video, thumbs up please. I'd sure appreciate it. If you're a subscriber, thank you very kindly. I truly appreciate that. If you're not a subscriber, you might consider becoming one. I put out regular videos about one a week and I'd like to keep in touch. An easy way to subscribe is just click my picture you see there near the end of the video. Your comments are always welcome and I love reading them. So for now, this is Phil, Shady Acres Woodshop, signing off.